Hi everybody, I'm Walt Lewis and this is another Fire Engineering Training Minutes. Today we're going to talk about UAV systems and their value in the fire service. First we got to get the program started and today I invited Jason Revolt to be able to discuss how he got our program started with the Orlando Fire Department. Thanks for coming out today Jason. Thanks Walt, thanks for having me. Um, when we decided to go uh, with the UAV for the arson and bomb squad, our first decision was what FAA guidelines are we going to fall under? The 107 program or the COA program, the Certificate of Authorization. With the two programs, the 107, the onus really falls on the individual. He's an individually licensed pilot and all uh, notifications that need to be made, the, the contact of the control tower, all those things that you need to do, uh, that individual is going to perform them and they're going to perform them at the time of their flight. With the COA, it's an agreement between the FAA and the city and it allows us to have a understanding ahead of an emergency situation as to where and when we're able to fly these drones. When we made those two distinctions, we determined that the co route was going to be the rest, best route for us. As the individual, if you went on vacation and you had the 107, this device would not fly, it wouldn't be appropriate for the department. Whereas with the co, it covers the whole department and allows if you change out to another position, somebody else to come in and continue on with the operation. Correct. This was a feature that we wanted to have within our program. As far as special training or anything else, did you guys have to go through anything besides just the notification process and how to make that happen? Sure. We decided to partner with a third party uh, to give us the initial training, to give us the guidance, and that gave us that education between that 107 and the COA program. And they sat down with us and they negotiated the the, the training aspects and what we needed to get this program started and to keep it running in the future. Now you'd uh, mentioned uh, certificate of uh, authorization. I've also heard COA is being utilized as a uh, certificate of airworthiness. Is there a difference? There is. Uh, so your COA is a certificate of authorization. It's authorizing you from the FAA to be able to fly in certain areas within your jurisdiction. Uh, the certificate of airworthiness actually is talking about the aircraft itself. That's the airworthiness, the ability for this craft to fly. Now, uh, the FAA also established a before you fly program so that you can validate, make sure where you're going to fly your UAV or drone, as we call it, uh, in a safe location. Is, is that something worth checking out before we start putting a device in the air? Absolutely. Uh, when you're starting off and you're training and as you're getting through the paperwork, which can take a little bit of time, you always want to fly with best practices using the features that come with the drones to fly in a safe location. These aren't the only ones out there and these aren't the no. only ones that a department would have to go with. No. They could certainly go with any of the devices that are out there under these either programs 107 or the COA, right? Absolutely. The platforms themselves vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, from job point to job point, but the key component of establishing your your UAS program is getting the paperwork, getting the authorizations, de deciding whether you're going to fly as a 107 pilot or you're going to certify your agency to be able to fly and train the individuals. And having those all established allows your city legal or county legal, your fire chief, your administration, everybody to have that comfort factor of having a program like this that's on the cutting edge of technology to come about and be instilled with appropriate practices. So this way it's safe for everybody, safe for the organization, safe for the people that it's going to fly over and done properly, right? Absolutely. You're going to invest some time and resources into this program and you want to prove its success over time. So this is definitely emerging technology, so I'm excited. I always look forward to flying. So we're going to put the devices in the air and uh, see how valuable they are. Sounds good.
So as you can see, flying these things is, is so versatile and it's fairly easy. They've become very simple to work with. So how it's, awesome uh, was that that view that you have from from that uh, platform above you know, without using a tower company? Yeah, for sure. Or a helicopter. I mean, certainly they have their value and they, they do a great thing. But uh, to be able to put these devices in the air and have a viewpoint for USAR, for technical rescue, for the incident commander on a fire ground, for EOD, for all the, all the aspects. There are so many versatile potentials in the fire service alone that uh, having a program like this is well worth the money that I think any agency could put towards it. Absolutely. The value in our safety and the, when seconds count for our, our victims, you really can't compete with, with these platforms here. For sure. Well, we're going to touch on a couple other topics and other episodes, but for Fire Engineering's Training Minutes, thanks for watching. I'm Walt Lewis. I'm Jason Revolt. Thanks. Thank you. Take care.